This video is brought to you by Wowbox. Stay tuned to the end to learn how you can win a trip to Japan. Yeah, the coolest seahorse-shaped island in the world. It's also where this box came from. Wow! Wowbox is a subscription box filled to the brim with goodies from Japan. I mean, when was the last time you had a, uh... Ruby chocolate Kit Kats with cranberries and almonds? Oh my god. It tastes so much better than it sounds. Or when was the last time you had a... Uh, uh, and I'm sorry? Mango butter flavor. Oh. I understand now. It's amazing. Lay's has nothing on this. Oh my word. I may have found a new addiction. Anyway, anyway, I'm getting distracted from the discussion at hand by this amazing sponsor that you can find a link to below. But primarily, you click this video to learn about food Pokemon, so let's get to that. What's with all these Pokemon based on food? I mean, some are more obviously food than others, but still, what's the deal? Ice cream, whipped cream, an apple turnover now? I mean, I guess the apples and cherries and banana tree mons are fine. They are fruits. I mean, there are plenty of plant Pokemon and fruit and vegetables are plants, so you know. Also look, it's Appleen. A new apple Pokemon. But the plant Pokemon aside, are these Pokemon edible? I mean, I mean, yes, but I mean specifically more edible than, say, a Rhyhorn. I mean, it's literally a floating dog made of fairy floss, aka cotton candy. Wait, is candy a food? According to the definitions, yes! Food is food when it's edible. Right. Wait, what isn't edible then? I mean, I could eat this plush technically, you know, with like a fork and a knife, maybe with a little balsamic on it. Mm. Maybe there's something in here I could add. Maybe if I sprinkle on some, uh, Shioku no Osaku snack soy butter aji. I'm mispronouncing some of those, I'm sure. Purple. All right, no, I'm not gonna eat that. Could eat these though. This is pretty good. What even is it? My poor meal tank. Anyway, let's get more specific. It turns out the definition of edible contains fit for consumption. Basically, if you can actually digest and get nutrients out of it, and it's not gonna kill you or hurt you, then it is edible. So while I could eat just like a wood with some nails, I'm pretty sure like 99.9% .9 positively sure that it's not edible. Technically speaking. Also, this does technically make candy a food. So, uh, enjoy that information, I guess. But does that make Swirlix edible? I'd argue no. As it turns out, it's not actually cotton candy. Yeah, that's a lie. Rather, it's a fairy dog that eats nothing but sweets itself, and thus it smells and looks like cotton candy. It uses its light, sticky fur to entangle foes and distract them with its fur's sweet taste. So what do you suppose Swirlix tastes like? Just like cotton candy, or maybe like this melon soda candy? I know characters. Oh man, it's got layers! Layers of deliciousness! So how do you suppose Swirlix does its thing? Well, in all likelihood, the fur itself isn't the sweet thing, because that's not how fur works. But this dog could be extruding a sweet oil onto its fur. Basically, all creatures produce sebum, the oil that is secreted through hair and fur follicles. It is made up of triglycerides, free fatty acids, wax esters, squalene, cholesterol esters, and just straight up cholesterol. And basically, it is used to keep fur and skin moist, because when skin and hair get too dry, they begin to crack. The water that was bulking the cells up is gone, creating more space for air to get involved, leading to flaky, crackly, damaged hair and skin, sometimes to the point of wounding, which leads to open sores and infections which obviously is bad, so obviously the body has ways of combating this. Secreting oils. These oils have all kinds of smells depending on the health and or diet of the creature involved. And in the case of smelling sweet, it's more common than you'd think. Eating nothing but sweets like this dog is a path towards type 2 diabetes. Speaking of which, I have type 1 diabetes, so I gotta inject every single time I eat carbohydrates. But this stuff is so worth it! Stab, stab, stab. But the fun fact here is that some folks with type 2 diabetes sometimes smell fruity, or like maple syrup, especially as they get active, like when going grocery shopping. 
This is because their bodies are desperately trying to get rid of as much sugar as possible because there is way too much of it in their bodies. So it starts shoving sugar out of itself any way that it can. And yes, doggy diabetes is a thing, and clearly Swirlix has it. Come on, grain-free pet food people. Grains turn into glucose in the body. Pasta is just candy, but with extra steps. Also, the way I like to remind myself of things is sweets are for treats not for the always eats. Honestly, a monthly delivery of sweets is probably the way to go. It's a surprise every time, and this is like the perfect amount for a monthly supply. Choco Mint Pocky? Also, in complete 100% honesty, I've always preferred Eastern sweets over American ones. American sweets are just so cheap and in-your-face tasting. Like, some of them just hurt to eat. American sweet companies know nothing about subtlety or about just sitting there enjoying something as opposed to shoving it down your gullet and having the aftertaste instead of the real flavor. And that's why wow boxes are so cool. And you know what else is cool? Ice cream. And there's an ice cream Pokemon thanks to this man. The Vanillite line is one of the most hated Pokemon because it's an ice cream cone Pokemon. Why is that a thing? But what many folks don't realize is that it's not actually ice cream. Like, read the Pokedex. Come on, the lore thing that the franchise you hold so dearly is based on? These Pokemon are sentient icicles, and there have been Objectmon since forever. And these were introduced at the same time that the sentient snowflake was. So it was a good time for fans of that spooky snowman movie. But if they are just icicles, then why? Why do they have vanilla ice cream on top? Well, because it's just snow. They decorate themselves to look like ice cream. It makes them more cute and more likely to get a loving trainer. But it's more than that. It's actually really cool. Icicles are formed when snow up on a high place, like a tree or a rooftop, melts from the heat of the sun. And then the sun sets and it gets colder and colder. And so the water that was dripping down from the top slowly refreezes on top of itself, eventually forming an icicle. So ultimately, it's decorating itself not just for looks, but to keep itself alive. And you make fun of it for that. Hashtag rude. So, are Swirlix and Vanillish food Pokemon? Technically, no. One is just sweet smelling, and the other is just snow and ice. Which, I mean, you can get hydrated from eating snow and ice, but... I mean, then you could say Avalug is a food Pokemon, <laughs> and nobody wants that. But now, how about our friend Appelin over here? Ah! It's dead! Appelin is a bunch of question marks. It's actually as much of a food Pokemon as Farfetch'd is. That is to say, it itself is an animal, which I mean, I guess, can be food, but that's a, that's a different topic. Appelin isn't actually an apple. It's in an apple, hence the name, Apple In. Appelin is your classic worm living in an apple, but the new question is, why is it grass dragon type if it's a worm? Shouldn't it be bug type? Well, worm is another word for dragon in a few old European languages. And this Pokemon in particular may be inspired by the worm of Linton, a famous long green British dragon that lives inside of a hill. Apple Lin, worm of Linton. Yeah, this line is super creative, honestly. I absolutely love it. Just like how I love Marukawa Red Begum. Oh, it's cola flavored gum. Can't be chewing this all video. Also, cola is a weird flavor for gum. And plus, it makes your tongue red. Old oh, joy. It is good though. And while we're on its origins, there is a near century old apple orchard in England called the Dragon Orchard. It's based in Herefordshire by the Malvern Hills, and Appelin just happens to be found on Route 5 by Turfield, with these very similar looking hills around. Hmm? Granted though, this isn't where Stonehenge or the Cerneabas Giant is in real England, so either Galar is a big mix up jumbling of real England, which it is, or this Dragon Apple Orchard connection is coincidental. But anyway, they could have easily just done the classic worm in an apple, but they went the extra mile. It even has two awesome evolutions. If an apple in eats a tart apple, it evolves into Flapple. The dragon worm got bigger, and it uses the hollowed out apple to fly. It flaps. Flapple. Oh, it's so cute, yet cool at the same time. The tiny little worm ate the whole apple. But at least apples, you know, they have nutrients, so they're pretty good for you. Just like pure supply gummy I'm use, Plasma Nyatsukin, it's a gummy candy treat, but also a probiotic. It helps supply good bacteria into your gut. It's a little heart. And this gummy 
is yummy. But if Apple and eats a sweet apple, it becomes Apple Ton. Oh no, it's so chunky. It ain't thick. It thig. Also, it's no longer in the apple, like apple in. Now it's under the apple. Apple ton. Under. But also, ton is an old English suffix meaning enclosure, house, or dwelling. This cutie with a booty made a house out of an apple turnover. Oh yeah, also apple turnover. Apple ton. Turn over. An apple turnover is a super popular sort of British pie thing. It looks like the things that are on its back. But here's where things get weird. So according to the Pokedex, kids would peel those bits of skin off of the apple ton and eat them, which... Sounds weird, but apparently this whole top half of Appleton is secreting a sweet, sweet nectar. Sounds like the Sorlix thing again, but this time actually food, because it's nectar. It's grass type, it's part plant. And I like how this one, it came because the apple and ate a sweet apple. That's why it's the big and honkin' evolution. It ate like six times its weight in sweet. But still, I could see maybe licking it, or like taking your finger and wiping nectar off, but to actually peel off its skin? What? I mean, I guess these parts look easily removable, so maybe that's the point. Maybe it's like how lizards detach their tail or how crabs rip their arms off to escape predators. Appleton just pops off some super tasty skin. I guess reptiles do shed their skin all the time, so I guess it's not that weird. But overall, I like how the two food Pokemon people say are food and that's bad actually aren't food. And then this food Pokemon that people say it's not the food, it just lives in food, wound up actually becoming food. It just goes to show you that you really can't judge a Pokemon by its cover, especially when that cover is the skin of an apple. Oh hey, the whale box even had this little Pokemon suite. It's a score bunny. Oh, that's actually really cool. I got to get cool shots of these. It's cola flavored. Chewy candy. It tastes like score bunny. That's why it's on there, right? This is this is what score bunny tastes like. Like a spicy cola. So again, major, major thank you to Wellbox for sponsoring this entire video. Insulin is so expensive, and I need it to live. But sponsorship aside, I totally recommend these guys. Oh man. Links are in the description. And now about that free trip to Japan I mentioned. The contest is open to all Wowbox subscribers, even if this month is your first. And to encourage more folks to join, they've cut the price of this particular box dramatically. They specifically told me to tell you that these boxes will never be this cheap again, especially when you use the coupon code on their website. So, step one for the contest. Be a Wowbox subscriber and then create a video to show your love for Wowbox. Creativity is encouraged. Then be sure to use hashtag MySweetWowBox and tag them. And post that to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or TikTok. Whatever you use. The grand prize is a round trip to Japan, and there are also three more prizes for the second through fourth place peeps. So, I hope to see one of you guys win, because you are way cooler than the other people, right? Because you watched this video. So thanks a bunch, and until next time, you never stop using your noggin.